The title of chapter one is what? Because when I was a teenager, I didn't know what to do with myself. So at the age of 14 years old, at the end of primary school, they asked me, okay, now, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a cook? Do you want to work on a computer? Uh, I want to play music. Now, Nicholas, this is not a job. We're all talking about a real job. And 14 years old is a very important time because it's the first time in your life you have to decide about your future. And you have to decide between technology or literature. So, Nicholas, do you want to be a scientist or a writer? Uh, I would like to write books about technology. No, 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 okay. So I like writing, and I was confused, because I like to fix cars as well. So they put me in the technology area, with a lot of people like me who didn't know what to do, except having fun in the classroom. So for one year, it was a disaster, because I was learning things I didn't know why I was learning it. So I did an apprenticeship which means I was working half-time in a mechanic industry company and half-time at work, at school. So I was doing, I was learning at school what I was making at work. And this made a lot of sense to me. I got some confidence and I passed my exam. With that exam, I started my Tour de France, which has nothing to do with Miguel and Dudain. Tour de France at Les Compagnons du Devoir, Los Compañeros du Devoir. It's, it's a community of working class people with very talented manual workers who travel to learn different techniques. I really enjoyed this time, but after a year working at a company, I had an accident and I lost my hand. So that was the big problem. No more clap during the concerts. No more Rabbi Jacob on the Saturday night with my friends. Yeah, because I liked to do it. And this is how I start chapter two, which is why. Why this happened to me? Why? I don't deserve this. Nobody deserves this. And I remember two weeks after my accident, I was at the hospital and my self-esteem was so down that I just wanted to die and jump out of the window but I was only at the first floor. <laughs> so I took a pen. <laughs> Gracias. I took a pen and my notes, and I wrote down my dreams. And one of my dreams was to go to Ireland. So actually, a few weeks after, in the re-education center, I was learning how to use this hand. They said, OK, now you are going to have this. I was very disappointed, because this is what it does. It was in 2002, and I was thinking, come on, you're making Terminator movies, you're making science fiction movies, and this is all you have to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the people were so kind, you know, because humans, humans are important, we are very important. They make me smile, they gave me encouragements, they took care of me, I, wa I was having fun a lot with my roommate. I had the best time of my life at the hospital. <laughs> Maybe because I was uh, smoking joints with my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when I left, when I left and I came back to the real life, I had to deal with the look of the people, and this is hard, because people are not used to see disabled people. But I decided to try to leave I decided to try to go to the places I wanted to visit. Like, I wanted to go to Brittany in France. I went there. I wanted to get back to work. I wanted to get a new job. I wanted to go back to school, study mechanical design. So I tried. I also wanted to play music. So I tried to play drums despite my disability. So I was actually doing things I was afraid to do before. And in a kind of way, my accident woke me up. And I was turning my angriness into motivation. And motivation 
is what gives you the energy to do what you want to do. So two weeks after, two years after, sorry, two years after I passed my exam, and with the money I saved at work, I decided to learn English in Ireland. So I realized my dream. And actually, a year after, I was in a recording studio to study sound engineering. I was learning and playing music every day. Wow. I realized the power of thoughts, that the more you think about something, the more you have chances, chances that this will happen. The more you focus on what you want, the more this has chances to happen. And this is very important, because it's about to know what you need or what you want, the focus. So I, I did my course in sound engineering, but still, I didn't have the answer to the why. Why? And actually, even deeper, why am I here? What am I? <laughs> I can see everybody. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> why am I here? What am I supposed to do here? Why are we on Earth? I know it's very deep questions, but I had to think about it because I had time. And this is very important because I think each of us, everybody, has a particular reason to be here. Because we are all different, we all have a mission, we are all good for something. I didn't know what was mine, still I didn't know. So I decided to travel, to find answers, to get lost, to find myself, to meet new people, to share ideas, to be on my own, to have time to think, to observe, to explore the world. And I can tell you that the world is beautiful. You don't, you, you don't even have to go far away to realize it. If you get lost in your mind sometimes, just look at things you like. So, after my travels, I realized that happiness is not freedom. Happiness is peace of mind. And this takes me to chapter 3, which is, why not? Because do you remember in 2012? 2012 was the year of change. You know the Maya calendar, do you remember? 21st of December, the end of the world. And, uh, elections in France, in the United States, in Russia, the world was going to, wow! In 2012, I was depressed. Because of a uh, short, because of my broken heart. <laughs> so I was waiting for the change. I was waiting a lot. And in 2012, I discovered new hands. I discovered that the Terminator hand actually exists. These hands move each fingers. They are very sophisticated. You know, you can move each finger, you can control it with your iPhone. I wanted it so much. Wow, you know, I was just dreaming. But the price is 27,000 euros. So, no, sorry, I don't, I don't have it. And at the same time, I discovered a new world, a world of fab labs, makers, and open source. Fab labs are public fabrication laboratories where you can make things, you can use machines. And makers are the people who make what they need instead of buying it. And when I saw a 3D printer for the first time, I asked them, OK, can you make a hand with this machine? And when they saw my disability, they said, yeah. <laughs> so a few months later, we met again, and we just decided to try. So we downloaded files, open source files, on the internet. We printed the hand. We made the hand with a 3D printer. We put some motors inside. There is an uh, electronic Arduino board. There is muscle sensors. There is a battery. And there is the human to control it. And this is actually the third prototype that we made. And the cost of this hand is 1,000 euros. This hand is made by a British company that we work with. So the focus now of this hand 
now the focus of the project is to make this hand robust, lighter, with an artistic aspect, open source, so everybody can use it. And this is what we want. We want to make it accessible. We have an utopia that health is for all. This is all the hands. This is our first prototype that costed 300 euros. And this is my new job. And this is how I see my disability now. So it's completely different. So, yeah. We want, to, uh, we, want, we want that more people start to fix themselves. We talk about handicap environment. So yes, it's a technological revolution, but it's, it's also an educational revolution. Because today, no matter your age, your sex, your color, your degree, you can learn if you want to. It's also an individual revolution, because if you act on yourself, you can be the change you want to be, and you can show disability differently. But above all, it's a social revolution because it reaches health for all and because a prosthesis should not cost an arm. Muchas gracias. <laughs>